If we cannot know that Christ was crucified, we can't know anything about history at all. Christ's death on the cross is the most certain fact of anyone in history. If I tricked you into believing something to be true that wasn't true, what would you call me? A liar. But he won't call Allah a liar for doing exactly the same thing. So my question is, what would you call me? You as you and not God, a deceiver. There you go. He said he would call me a deceiver as well. So he said it and he said it. So if he gives a promise to the Muslim followers of Jesus and then that fails to come true, then Allah has failed in his promises. So now we have a deception. We have a contradiction and we have a failure in promise. He literally he said no, no, that if no, no. I did yes, what Allah true. did, no, 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 I no, would no, be no, a no. deceiver. Logically, therefore, Allah is a deceiver. A, a minute and a half. All right, a minute and a half each. Ready? I'll go first. Go. So when? So no, Dean. Stop. Pause. Stop. You see how how long were we were talking? One second before he interrupted. One second before he interrupted. What do you want to talk about? We're talking about whether a Muslim can claim to be a Christian. That's what we're talking about. Whether a Muslim can claim to be a Christian. Can we? Can That's the topic. Can we put it in right, a better way? More accurate target, target, target. Way. No, no, no. Right. Target. Can more, I? More accurate way. No, 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 bro, bro. You called yourself a Christian. We said you're not a Christian. That's what we're debating. So that's what we're debating. What I mean. One minute and a half. Let me go first. Let's have a conversation. You requested a conversation. We're going to give you, you a minute and a half. But please don't interrupt. Are you ready? Do you want to Are you ready? Look, right, I'm, I'm, brother, brother, brother. I'm the church. I'm, I'm going to start now. Okay, right. ready? Go. I'm, I've not agreed with the topic. Right, stop. Because stop. He's, I didn't agree he's, with he's, the he asks topic. for no, a it's, conversation. It's, it's, let's agree. And then he immediately interrupts. So, ladies and gentlemen, because he rejected an opportunity to have a conversation, I'm going to do a quick talk. <laughs> You're not a quick and the quick talk is this yeah. Muslims go round the park claiming that they are Christians. This kind of lie that Muslims say when they call themselves Christians demonstrates the fact that they don't know what the term means. The term Christian was coined in the city of Antioch. It was an insult to Christians. It is Latin. Greek, sorry, it means little Christ. And it was given as an insult to those who called themselves followers of the way. Because our Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goeth to the Father but through me. Amen. Amen. And they were insulted because of their devotion to Christ. To be a Christian means that you must be a student of the teachings of Jesus Christ. No Muslim has access to anything that Jesus taught because the Quran was written 600 years too late, a thousand miles too far away in a language that Jesus never spoke. Muslims come to Christians and say, how can you believe the Gospels when the Gospels are in Greek, but Jesus spoke Aramaic? By their logic, how can you believe in the Quran when the Quran is in Arabic, but Jesus spoke Aramaic? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when you compare the teachings of Jesus Christ in the New Testament to the teachings of Jesus Christ in the Quran. They are not the same person. They do not teach the same religion. Christ taught his own divinity. He taught his own equality with God. 
The Christ of the Quran refused such an honor, refused such a title. The reality, the reality, ladies and gentlemen, is that to be a Christian, you must take seriously the words of Jesus. And I ask you all, what is your opinion of Jesus Christ? Who do you think that he is? A great prophet? A great teacher? If you think he is these things, isn't it incumbent upon you to learn all that you can about his life and his teachings and to incorporate them into your life? Amen. Any questions? Go on. I'm trying to follow your logic. You yeah. said that Muslims and their understanding of Jesus yes. is flawed because they came 600 years too late. Yes. But the, the writings and the teachings of Jesus weren't done during his time. The writings... No, I'm not finished yet. Go on. And then you said, oh, because of the distance. So what, you had to be in like a certain proximity to Jesus to like follow his teachings. And then you said language, like, oh, he spoke Aramaic. But then it got translated in Koinic Greek and then went on and went on. But then the Islam was done in Arabic. I mean, I don't really know what the la languages change and develop. Like, if we went back to like Abraham, Moses, Adam, who knows what they spoke. Do you know what I mean? So it just seems like you make a point, but then it's just like full of holes and then you just move on. Okay, like shall I reply those, to that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like what's, your, what's your name, bro? Muhammad. Bob, take it you're coming from an Islamic perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Which version of Islam are you coming from? Uh, Sunni, Shia, Ahmadiyya, Sufi? I don't, really Sufi. I don't really subscribe to sectarianism. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I don't either. Yeah. So, the, 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 firstly, let's deal with the argument about language. Yeah. Muslims constantly come to Christians in this park, in this corner, and say the argument, Jesus spoke Aramaic, but the New Testament is written in Greek, as if somehow that disproves what we know about Jesus' teachings. Let me finish. Now, the truth is, all I'm doing is responding to that argument and saying, if you're going to make that argument, well, it works both ways. If you're going to try and dismiss Christians' knowledge of Christ's teaching because it's written in Greek, then likewise we can dismiss your claims about Christ's teachings because it's written in Arabic. So that's the first point. The second point, why does it matter when it was written? Well, obviously, any objective person who's looking into the teachings of a historical figure wants to find the earliest sources possible. And the earliest sources possible about Jesus Christ are in their entirety in the New Testament. The New Testament signifies the earliest possible sources about Jesus Christ. I didn't interrupt you, do not interrupt me. We can do it timed if you prefer. Furthermore, when we are looking at these earliest sources, the very earliest sources were the epistles about Jesus Christ, written by the apostles, James, Peter, Paul. And these were written within decades of the event. In some instances, within five years of the events. The, the New Testament in its entirety was written within 60 years of the life of Jesus Christ. And we find correlations between other writings of antiquity, writings of church fathers, and the New Testament writings, as well as Second Temple Jewish writings, all of which point to the accuracy of what Christians believe about Jesus. So, how would you like to reply to that? Right, okay. You answered, like, all the points, but I'll just go on what I think of. Okay. Right, so you were saying that the accumulation of the writings of Jesus yes. happened at the same time. I wouldn't say within five years, I don't know about that. But, right, okay, within decades. Okay. I'm not here to hearken what other Muslims have said about using that argument as yeah. the fact that, oh, right, you know, uh, the, you know, the accumulation of those books happened in a different language, therefore, you know, it, yeah. it's not that. That's fair enough. I, I'm okay. not making that like, yeah. a statement. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, 
But the point is that, from, from your central point, is the idea that the Muslim Jesus is 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 a, a different person. Yes, he doesn't did. qualify yeah. as a Christian Jesus. Right, that's which right. Which is fair. That's the first statement that any Christian can make, and some people can find commonality between it. It's just like if you're saying, well, we're trying to find the Thank earliest you. sources, right? The earliest sources. But you're kind of just setting your own goalposts. Like, isn't it? Isn't it just? I'm sure you'll agree that a lot of it's just been cherry picked. I mean. It's an accumulation of different writings, different books that, you know, different sets of the Bible, whether it's this many books or that many books in their Bible. So you're just saying, oh, well, it's decades since then, and some within five years, or some 100 years after, whatever. And we've left that out, we've left that out. How <coughs> I don't understand how that like validates your claim at all. If anything, if you were looking at if you look at an Islamic perspective, it was revealed during the time of the Prophet while he was alive. It, like it, in, the, in the language he spoke and everything. So and can also I reply? The, yeah, it's a wonderful point. In the language, like well, I'm assuming you've had a lot of discussions with other Muslims. Uh, I'm assuming they've made that point very important. That yeah. The language is important. Like, yeah. Like. How, how would you know what Jesus talked about? You spoke Arabic. I just see that like, that's just such a non-point. Can, can I reply to that? Yeah. So you, you didn't take on board what I said the first time. What I said the first time was that I am simply pointing out that a Muslim argument that's popular in this corner, that the New Testament was written in Greek, Jesus spoke in Aramaic, so therefore somehow that casts aspersions on whether we can believe in the New Testament. That's their claim. Is, is, but you're, 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 <coughs> And I was just pointing out that when I made that statement, I'm simply showing that that argument goes backwards and forwards. It's non, I agree, it's a non sequitur argument. But if Muslims make it, I can throw it back at them. And they do make it, and so I am throwing it back at them. Now, when it comes to what we have in the New Testament, what we have in the New Testament is literature that was written because a community existed. That community existed and caused the literature to be written about what it believes. So in Luke's, in Luke's, in, don't interrupt, I didn't interrupt you. Luke, Luke himself said <coughs> in his introduction to his gospel and book of Acts, he said, many have undertaken to write an account of the things that, that we believe, Theophilus. But I thought it a good thing to write an orderly account so that you might have the certainty of what you believe. So in other words, there's this community that's written accounts of Jesus' life and people believe it already. And because they believe it, they've written accounts. And then Luke goes to write an orderly account. Now, the, the fact of the matter is, these sources are connected to the original Christian community. The community that was born of the apostles' teaching. Which means that if you are an objective historian, and you said that my criteria was arbitrary, it, uh, it shows that you're not a student of history because my criteria is historical academic criteria. When a historian tries to learn about history, they look for early, multiple, independent sources to find out about what happened in history. And they use triangulation of different claims and statements pointing to what happened in history. So for instance, let, let's cut to a chase, a, a, a clear blue water issue between Muslims and Christians. Christianity teaches that Christ was crucified. Islam teaches Christ was not crucified. Here we have two factual statements, two statements claiming to be fact about the person of Jesus. Now, when two people make a claim that are in opposition to one another, the thing that you do is you look for other kinds of evidence and you look at the quality of evidence to see who's telling the truth. And what do historians do? They look for multiple early independent sources about the issue. So let's do that about Jesus Christ and the crucifixion. And because this has real significance. If Christ was crucified, Islam is false. Amen. If Christ was not crucified, Christianity is false. So we have a touchstone issue that proves my religion wrong or your religion wrong. Now, when we look into the event of the crucifixion, the earliest independent sources that we have of both Christian and non-Christian writings all agree that Christ was crucified. 
Bart Ehrman, who's an apostate from Christianity, a critic of Christianity, and a textual scholar of the Bible, states this. If we cannot know that Christ was crucified, we can't know anything about history at all. Christ's death on the cross is the most certain fact of anyone in history. So how would you reply to that? Just ignore the guy, just ignore the guy. Yeah, continue. He was removed of the... Yeah, finish. I want you to deal with the point, yeah. He was crucified, but he didn't die on Just ignore him. Don't, don't, you'll just encourage him, go on. Well, so the idea of like, your, the academic racism, the historic racism. They did not career. kill him, not. Shall we move this way so those two can argue? Come on, let's, come on, move this way. If you want to listen to us, carry on, go on. So I think from, I think, I'm sure you, you know, because you've debated a lot on this, yeah. the Muslim perspective on the crucifixion is that perhaps a, a crucifixion happened, but it wasn't Jesus. That's the claim that Muslims have. Yes. That's the claim in the Quran. Yes. Okay, it's not the idea that there's no such thing as crucifixions, it never happened. If there was any sources about it, it's all corruption. That doesn't matter. That just comes down to like a faith-based argument. That's right. like what I believe, what yes. you believe. Yes. Right? So it doesn't really matter. The criteria you like, what do we, what, how do we go through? to understand if something is uh, truth. You said, with the early sources, we look for multiple sources. An independent source. An independent source. For your basis on faith, for like, for, for Jesus, 30 years after his time, you go for diverse opinions, consensus. You, you, you admit that it went through process of elimination. Tell me when you want me to reply. No, you can go. You okay, can jump in. so what, what I'm saying to you is that when we've got a historical fact to investigate, we've got two, we've got two claims about Jesus Christ. One Christian claim, Christ was crucified. Two Islamic claim, Christ was not crucified. Right, so, 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 my point being, my point being, is that when we're investigating these two contradictory claims, what we need to do is investigate what evidence is available. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Because you're just going to repeat what you just said. Okay. Right? I'm saying to you that Muslims believe that Christ wasn't the one who was crucified. So if you're going to give me a list of academic, oh, right. this person is stated. So let, let, let me come to that point then. Let me come to that point then. Let me come to that point. That's just a non-point. Let me come to that point. Fair enough. Let me come to that point. 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 Yeah. Because the thing is, if you're saying that Allah deceived everyone into thinking that someone was crucified who was wasn't. No, you you have said, and that the Quran states. The Quran states. What the Quran states is that the Jews claim that they have crucified the Messiah Jesus, but verily they have not. It was made to appear to them. Who made it to appear to them? Allah. So if Allah deceives the people into thinking that Christ was crucified and allowed that lie to be spread around the world for 600 years before he decides to correct it, then your argument. God, you let me finish, God let me finish, are we, are we just, answer. sorry, are we just like, going to interrupt one another now? Shall we just do that? Shall we just start foundation. interrupting one another? Right, so I'm going to, from now on, I'm going to okay, interrupt well, him. Well, one second, I'm going to interrupt him going forward because that's the kind of debate he wants. So the reality is, if Allah deceives people for 600 years, then that means that he is an established deceiver, an established liar. Yes. And in your own hadiths, you wouldn't trust someone in the chain of hadiths who was a liar. So you wouldn't trust Allah if he was in the chain of ha and a hadith about Muhammad. You would see the name Allah in the hadith chain and you would go, well, we can't trust this hadith. It's Daif. Why is it Daif? Because is daif. Allah is a known liar. Now, if Allah is a liar, how do you know he's not lying to you about what he said about Muhammad? You, you literally apply that argument to literally everything you say. That's a Go on then, do it. You do it. You just said, if, if, if Allah did this, therefore it was a deception. And how could what what else Allah, would you call it? How could your Allah... Allah what else would you call it? Listen. What else would you call it? So then you could literally use what that else would you call it? everything. You could literally how does Allah what else would you call it? cancer in children? How does Allah allow all the What else would you call it? What else would you call it? We don't know his. Uh, uh, what else the would you call it? He did it. That's not my you, question. No, I didn't ask the reason you, why he did you it. Call, you call it. What else better. would you call it? What else would I call? What would you call it? God's will. God's will. Yes. What? What happened? 
Tell, describe what happened to people. What did people see on the cross according to the Islamic perspective? From the Islamic perspective, the true believers knew it was. No. What did the people who saw that man on the cross that they thought was Jesus, what did they see? They saw a crucifixion. Of who? From their perspective? The people who wanted to see Jesus crucified. What did they see? They saw Jesus crucified. And was it Jesus on the cross? No. Was, according to Islam. So the, in other words, they saw something that wasn't true. Is that correct? Uh, if God willed for certain people to see that, then yeah. Yes, who, yes, it, it is correct. Because people... What do you call people, it... People who wanted to see if, it. If, if I tricked you into believing something to be true that wasn't true, what would you call me? A liar. He said he would call me a liar. So when I trick him into believing something that's not true, he would call me a liar. But, but he won't true. call Allah a liar for doing exactly Allah. the same thing. To the non-believers, not to the Oh, believers. does that make it okay then? Okay. Yeah. Yes, it does. What, do, what, yes, it does. James, bro, 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 bro. Are you saying, is it okay for right. God to punish the non-believers? And you go, right. is that okay? Bro, Everything you say do you want to do you want to jump into the debate? You've twisted it. Do you want to jump in? Jump in. You've twisted it in a very clever way. Oh, I'm very clever. I want to start one second. You've clarified it 6,000 years down the line. 600. 600. After he clarified it. No, no, he didn't deceive anyone. It didn't deceive anyone. So, But he said he did. I used the word deception. That's why I'm on he he the said he did deceive. So sorry, one second. Sorry, let's be clear. Uh, let's be clear. Six hundred years later. Six hundred years later. What about the person in the year three hundred that died believing Christ was crucified because Allah tricked the people? So tell me, according, uh, one second, years later, what about the person in three hundred A.D. who died believing Christ was crucified? What about him? What about him? Are you saying there were no humans in the year 300 AD? Are you saying that time is a factor? Why would he send multiple prophets there? Was happening, which Allah made them there. Yeah. Bro, let me ask you the same question that I asked him. Right, if I made you, if I made you through making you see something that wasn't true, I want you to answer my question. No, no, I'm, no, no, I want you to answer my question. Don't avoid it. Yeah. Don't be a chicken. Okay, Don't be intellectually I'm dishonest. Point, oh, Answer my question. Answer, my, Answer my question. Answer yeah. yeah. my question. If I made you believe something false because I made you see something through some kind of illusion yeah. and then you believe that to be true when I knew that it wasn't true, what would you call me? I'm, I'm calling you very clever because you're saying you made me believe. Are, are, are you going to be are you going to be answering my question at any point? Answer my question. Go on. Go on, answer my question. God didn't make anyone. That wasn't my question. That wasn't my question. I'll ask my question again. No, 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 brother, brother. You're just avoiding the question. Here's the question again. If I made you believe something that is not true, and you believed it to be true because I tricked you into thinking that. You what would you say, call me? That that was the question. What would you call you me? Is that what then, you would call then, me? Wait, then, is that what you would call then, me? No, because, what? No. Then, so so my question is, no, no, no. what would you call me? You as you and not God, a deceiver. There you go. He said he would call me a deceiver as well. So he said it, and he said it. You said it. It came out of your lips, bro. If these were your words. You would be a deceiver. So, if, now, let me ask you this question. Now, let me ask you this question. Bro, we were having a conversation. You wanted to interrupt. Now, if you want to join this conversation, at I'm least have a... No, no, one second. No, one second. One oh, second. In a very Ladies and gentlemen, it, he receiving. literally Here's said it. No, that no, no, if no. I did yes, what Allah you. did, no, 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 I no, would no, be no, a no, deceiver. That's why Logically, no, therefore, he very cannot very deny way. that Allah, Allah is a deceiver. Amen. No. Ladies and gentlemen, if Muslims accept 
that Allah was willing to lie to the entire world for 600 years, allowing countless generations of people to die, Martyrs. believing something that was false, then how do you know, Muslims, that Allah isn't lying to you now about Muhammad and then in another 600 years he's going to go, surprise, I was lying all along. How would you like to reply to that? Yeah, go on. Right. So, that, so, so your this flawed foundation that you've made is the idea that God would never lie and if he deceives, this is, this is the God you believe, right? Did Abraham believe he was going to sacrifice his son? Did Yes, Abraham believed that. You believe it? Yes. God told him to sacrifice his son. Yes. Did he deceive him? No. He didn't deceive him? No. No, no, it was just... No. 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 Let me explain. Let go me on, explain. Let's hear this argument. Let me explain. Yeah. Yahweh did command Abraham to sacrifice his son. That command was a true command until God abrogated the command. Muslims believe in the concept of abrogation. No words of God were a lie. When God said to Abraham, sacrifice thine only son Isaac, he meant it. It was true. And Abraham was willing to submit to God and sacrifice his son, but God abrogated the command. Muslims believe in abrogation, and that is all that occurred in the story of Abraham. Let me just use. Let me just. Sorry, no. Sorry, man. Go on. I can't, I can't do right? Let me just use your exact same basic argument. Yes. Right. If I tell you, oh, we're just going for a coffee, mate, and we're going down to prayer. Yeah. And you say, oh, that's cool. And in your head, all you think is that we're going to go prayer. Yeah. But once we walk into prayer, or I take you somewhere else, it turns out it's a surprise party for you. Yeah. Was that deception? Um, was, was that, that deception? Did I deceive it, yes. you? Yes. Let, let, let me let me reply. I'm let me reply. Let, let me reply. Just re let me argument. reply. Let me reply. Let me reply. Let me just finish. Uh, you yeah, that's the question. Finish it. Okay, he's, he's going to finish it. Go on. Finish go on. Go on. Go on. Go on, Mohammed. You just said before to that gentleman yes. that if I was to do X and I turned out to be Y, yep. did I deceive you? And then you went, oh, exactly. So you would have called me a deceiver. Therefore, I'm going to reflect that on your God yep. and call him the, the great deceptor. Yep. So therefore, your whole religion is completely on the ground. Right? And I just give you the same argument with a story we both believe Abraham's sacrifice. That God yeah. deceived. It could be, it could Can be I reply? that way. Can I, I reply? Could, could, do you agree at this point that at least I could frame it the exact same way that you framed it? Can I reply? Way? Could you agree to that point and then you can buy it? No, I don't. So it can't be framed. So now can I reply? Selective. Can I, I can I reply? Can I reply? Oh, so here, no, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the analogy that he gave, the, the analogy that he gave. You see, you're not even listening now. You're not even listening, Mohammed, because you're rattled, bro, and you're rattled because you know that you've just admitted that Allah was a deceiver. But you're rattled. So now let me explain why his analogy is wrong. If I knowingly say one thing that is false with the intention of deceiving you that is a lie that is not what happened with Abraham God commanded Abraham to sacrifice his son and he meant it it was not a lie it was a command then God abrogated the command you can't lie in the imperative form furthermore furthermore the analogy is false because why? According to the Quran, Allah the magician made it look like Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. In other words, he planted a deception in the eyes of the observers and then allowed people to run with that belief for 600 years. For no reason. For no reason. Illusion. People died because of that belief. An army of martyrs. People shed blood because of that belief. People built civilizations because of that belief. And then 600 years later, Allah went, surprise, I didn't really mean that. I just made it look that way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is a lie.
No, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Muslims believe that a liar, that a liar can't be trusted in a chain of hadiths. There you go. They don't trust liars. So if you stuck Allah in a chain of hadiths, according to the hadith sciences, you couldn't trust a hadith from Allah himself. Amen. Jesus Christ was crucified. Absolutely. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were all written independently of one another. Paul's writings were written independent of one another and they all taught Christ crucified. Josephus taught Christ crucified. Tacitus taught Christ crucified. The church fathers taught Christ crucified. So we have early independent witnesses to the crucifixion of Christ. And the Muslims have a book written 600 years later by a man that was no witness to any events who admits that his God was a liar. And my question to this Muslim is if Allah lied to the Jews at the time of Jesus, how do you know he's not lying to Muslims today? That's my question. I'm sorry, you're done preaching. You seem upset. You seem upset. You seem upset, Mohammed. You set the tone of this debate when you started to interrupt. That's fine, and I will. So the burn. I'll go back to your analogy that you made. Okay. I said. What? What? Repeat back to me my analogy then. The analogy that if I would deliberately told you something and made you believe something, that wasn't would, true. That, would, would that make me a liar? Yes. Yeah, right. And I, I'll, I'll give you that one-to-one -one analogy again. Okay. okay. I say that we're going somewhere and it turns out not to be that place. Yes. Did I deceive you? That would be a lie. Would that be a lie? Yes. Okay. You said that God is different. You said, no, no, it's different. What did I, I say, though? I can't frame what did I say? No, 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 you interrupted me so I can interrupt you. You can't complain now. What did I say? I need your permission first. What did I say? Right. You said it's different because God meant it. He meant it and then, you know, changed his mind or whatever. One yeah, he gave a command. A he gave a command and then he abrogated the command. That's what I said. Yeah, okay. Fine. Where's the lie in that? No, no, listen. Where's the lie? Where's the lie? No, 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 you didn't so listen when I was talking. You interrupted. No, I don't know. You were happy to you interrupt. You went on about 12 minute fucking rant. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. No, 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 no. Right, Answer the question. Where's the lie in what I said? Listen. Go on. So you're saying it comes down to intent. Is that what you're saying? No, I didn't say that. You said those words. I'm saying, asking you, does it come down to intent? I'll clarify. Quickly, please. Yes. God gave a command. God abrogated a command. Where's the lie? Why did he abrogate the command? He abrogated the command because the command was a test of the faith. Okay, right. So if I was to apply the same logic and do and say something to you in a sense that I deceive you about something, but I'm only doing it as a test to see if you'll really go through with it. All right, that, that won't, no longer makes me a liar. That no longer makes me deceiving you in some way. Are you aware that you can't lie in the imperative form? Answer my question. God gave a command to Abraham to sacrifice his son. Yeah. When he gave that command, it was a true command. Okay. It was not a lie. That was a real command. God really was commanding Abraham to sacrifice his son. Yeah, but if I told you, when God, I told you to punch someone in the when street, God, got to the point when you're about when to get it, and God, I went, no, I was only just testing to see if you'd actually go that far, mate. Lol. Okay? So that, that that, that's me, not a lie. That's, that's a command. Deception. That's a command. So I didn't that's not a lie. Yes, so I didn't go, go, agree. That's not a command. That's not a lie. So it's not a lie. It's yes. Not a deception. That's not a deception. It's not a deception. That's not a deception. I made you believe that. Like, oh, I, I'll bet you five pounds if you go punch that guy over there. Yes. God gave a true command. Where is the lie? That's not deception. Is it a lie? I'm going to give a better analogy. Is that all right, brother? Very go on, yeah, Very quickly. If I'm a commander and I order my troops to march 100 meters, and after 50 meters I tell them halt, did I lie to them? 
Oh, no, exactly. they know exactly, exactly, exactly. But now let's go back to Allah and the cross. Now let's go back to Allah and the cross, because your first argument has failed, Mohammed. It's been proven to have failed. Your first argument is that you, you've got the same thing in the Bible because Abraham commanded and made Abraham believe that he was going to sacrifice his son and then commanded him not to. No, that's and not you've just argument, demonstrated that it wasn't a lie. I, I believe in both we've, we've got you on camera. Deception. We've got you no, on camera. I, I've got, I believe so, in both decisions. So, there's not deception. where does, say, where does Allah, where does, all right, so where does Allah command the Jews to crucify Jesus? Where does Allah command Jews to crucify Jesus? When does Allah Where does Allah command the Jews to crucify Jesus? He doesn't, does he? No. Who wants to crucify Jesus? Uh, the, the, the disbelievers, the non-believers. The, the Jews. Jews. Yeah. I seem to know your Quran better than you do. The Jews, the Jews are the one yeah. that wanted to crucify. No, the Quran uses the word Jews, bro. Like, you're arguing, you don't even know your own book. The Quran says that the Jews wanted to crucify Jesus. And then Allah says, no, they didn't crucify him. It was made to appear to them that they did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, who was it who made them believe that they had done something yeah. they hadn't I done? This is a circular argument. You're just going back to the same story. Because you haven't addressed it. No, I have. You I'm haven't? I'm telling you that I used the Abraham yeah. example no and this example. And you're saying the that Abraham the example has been proven false. It's not been proven. Your, yes, it has. Your interpretation you admitted it as much when the brother used the analogy. No, no, I didn't yeah, you did. So you just you are just choosing to say one is deception. And it one is. Isn't. It is. From the Islamic perspective, neither is God dece deceiving anyone. And so you're saying no, 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 no. Right. You're saying on. from the Muslims' perspective, in the case of the crucifixion of Jesus, that's a great deception. It is. It's a lie. It is. He allowed it for hundreds of years. It is. And he did. Right. Yeah. And didn't the time between Moses and Jesus were they not also led astray? W w Do by who? Free will. By who? Free will. Who led them astray? People go astray. People go astray. Yes, I agree. People do go astray. God I agree. Them go astray. But Allah does. That's, that's your, that's no, that's what that's your Quran your, says. Your and the proof, Muhammad, says, Muhammad, 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 Muhammad. Let, let's try and take some of the heat out of this conversation. No, that's fine. Right? No, no, no. Okay. You know, I'm not, I like, I like debating oh, so with people. This is my first time to speak as well. Welcome, welcome. Enjoy the atmosphere. Can get a bit intense sometimes. And I know when I first came that I also found it a really intense environment. So let's just move this way a second. Just a couple of steps. There we go. That's enough. So I just want to try and take the heat out of this conversation and get back to a reasoned argument. Okay. So I'm going to recapitulate some of the key points. Okay. The reason why I think your counter argument about Abraham fails is because when you read the text carefully, Abraham is given two different commands. One counteracts the other. It isn't that God, it isn't that God makes him think, for instance, like he sacrificed his son and then voila, you didn't really sacrifice your son, you sacrificed a lamb. It wasn't that kind of thing. It was that God gave him a command and then counteracted the command. That's, that's one thing. But what happens in the Quran is that because of people's free will, if you believe the Quranic story, they were enemies of God and they wanted to kill the Messiah. And so they tried to crucify him. And according to the Quran, Allah made it appear that way. Now, Christianity, our central doctrine is that Christ was crucified. So the reason why Christians believe that is because they experienced an event in history where they believe that their Messiah had been crucified. Now, if we take the Quran seriously, and we take the fact of Christian history seriously, because these two things can't be ignored, then Christians believe in the crucifixion precisely because Allah deceived a bunch of people and made them think something that was true wasn't. Now, you agreed that it would be deception if I did something similar. But you, the reason why you're reticent to say the same to Allah 
is because obviously it's Allah. So it's about the person who did the deception, not whether it was deception. But you would also agree that God has a plan. For all. Yes, of course. So, and some things that we'll just never understand, right? Yes, that's that, that, true. That, that's in the Christian faith as well as the Muslim. Yeah, but so, deception's so, so, not part so of that. So it's not about like sensitivity because I'm a because I'd have to, because in your in your argument I would have to attribute to that to our God. But you know deception's I mean? not part of that. So, so, so can I ask you a question because you're more learned than yeah. on uh, on uh, Christian scriptures and yeah. Is it not true that some Gospels do claim that Jesus wasn't crucified? No. At least one. There's no Gospel in the New... It doesn't matter whether you think you accept it or you, or you, or you subscribe to it. Is there not Gospels? Okay, so, let, 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 let's be, so let's be clear about what the term Gospel means, right? The term Gospel means good news. And the good news that is, that is meant by the word Evangelion because that's where we get it from the Greek, Evangelion. Yeah, right? It means, it means, uh, it, it's talking about the resurrection, the resurrection of Christ. If Christ was resurrected, then it follows that he had to die. So there is no gospel that teaches that Christ wasn't crucified. That, that's because it's central tenet to your faith. There are heretical, there are heretical yeah, groups that say Christ wasn't crucified. Of course, of course, I understand that. Like you would yeah. consider them qualifying factor as because yeah. the central core to a lot of Christian belief. Western all Canada. Christian belief. Of all Christians. I mean, there's so many sects. Everywhere. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure there is one. No, there really isn't. You know I mean? You're talking to a student of a religion. I did religion I at university. Yeah. But the idea is that you discard them because your central tenet is that my whole the whole Christian faith is the idea of like sacrifice and resurrection. That's what you're saying. That's the Evangelion. Yeah, yeah that, the Evangelion, the Evangelion, right? So I'm saying to you, but if there is, even if you consider them heretical, yeah. right? From the Muslim perspective, one could argue that, well, you call them heretical, but yeah. I guess people were led astray and the truth got lost. Okay, so let, let's yeah. talk about some of them. Yeah. So you've got groups like the Donatists who denied that Christ was crucified. But, and, and all of the early groups that deny the crucifixion have this a belief in common. The reason why they deny that Christ was crucified is because they say that God can't die on a cross. So they're, what they're saying is that because Christ is divine, he can't yeah. die on a cross, so he's not crucified. So the thing is, if you're going to appeal to that literature, bear in mind the reason why they're saying Christ wasn't crucified. They're saying Christ wasn't crucified because he's God. Yeah. That is obviously not fitting yeah. with what you believe. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm not saying <laughs> from a perspective is that... Like since the death uh, or the alleged death of uh, uh, the crucifixion of Jesus, that there is something that survives that validates our point. Yeah. I guess at this point there would be no need for another prophet. It would just be like, right, this is Jesus is the last messenger. And that's and exactly it, where we stand. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's the division. <clears throat> but the idea is that, like that gentleman said before, like a clarification, if you will. Whether you think, oh, it's such a long time for such a for such a misunderstanding, no, 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 called no, 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 deception. No, 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 Fine. Um, yeah, it's definitely I, I, a deception. I, I don't think time really is a factor. I mean, between the prophets, there's a great amount of time, and each time, the reason why I sent a prophet is that the people were led astray. But the, who, them right. lesson, but who led then, them astray? It doesn't matter. False prophets. No, it really their matters. Own free will. It doesn't matter. Can, I, can, I, can I come back on that, that point? No, no. But let me just finish. Yeah, and, and then I okay. You'll get it, right? Yeah. I'm just saying that. So when you say he allowed 600 years for this clarification yeah. to happen, I would say from the the biblical Quranic Abrahamic canon. Time really isn't a factor to, yes. to, to put in to the yeah. fact that, like, oh, why did you let it go on for so long? Yeah. You could have just set them out in bullet succession all the way up to today. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so allow me on. to reply to that. Right, because it really does matter who does the deception. Right? Jesus said that the father of lies is Satan himself. Okay? That's the father of lies. And the apostles teach that if anyone teaches a gospel different to this gospel, even if they're an angel of light, they are accursed. So accursed angels might teach a different gospel, right? Satan is the father of lies. God obviously does allow people to be deceived. He's given us free will. That he allows the devil to operate in the world. And so, in a broader sense, God allows deception. 
but to, to lay at the feet of God himself the charge of deception and say that God is the source of the lie when God is all truth. Remember in the Quran, in the Quran, one of the names of the 99 names of Allah is Al-Haq. Al-Haq is the truth. Where there is truth, there cannot be lies, agreed? Yes. So, let me finish. So it really does matter if it turns out that Allah is the origin of the lie. Because if Allah is the origin of the lie, not only does that mean that he is not Al-Haq, but it also means, it also means that from a biblical point of view, definitely, that he is akin to Satan himself. Would you agree that Islamically, let me finish, would you agree that Islamically, Iblis, Shaitan, is a liar who deceives? Right. Is it appropriate to say that Allah has uh, attributes and characteristics that we see in Shaitan? Right. So, I am trying to defend the honor of God by freeing him of any accusation of deception. But remember, Muslims in the Quran, I don't, I don't oh, say he is then you've got to explain that, to me. Claim, right, so fire, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. So now, so uh, uh, the burden of proof for me is let 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 let, let me let me, let me let me ask yeah. you a very pointed question. I want you to explain to me, uh, since since we agree with what the Quran says about Allah made it appear to be one thing when it was something else. How else would you describe that? I'm saying that that is a lie. What would you describe it as? Could you describe... Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me finish. No, let me finish my question. Please. Let me finish my question, Mohammed. Let me, yes, of course. Right. Would you agree with me that we can't state that that was a true statement at the time, i.e. in the first century? What statement? That, 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 that vision that those people were given, would you agree with me? that we cannot say that it was objectively true. Well, the, what they saw. Yeah. So in the yeah. first century, those Jews that wanted to crucify Jesus and saw Jesus on the cross, would you agree with me that objectively they saw something that was false? Yeah. Would you agree with me that the reason why they saw something that was false was because Allah made it look that way? Yes. Would you agree with me if something is false when actually it's the, the, the truth is the opposite, that that is deception. Yeah, I understand what you're trying to do, all right? Well, I'm, no, I'm not trying to say like you're sneaking around, I'm not trying to actually bring negative things to you. I'm just saying like, I understand the framing, the, the path you're trying to take. You're trying to go on a literal semantic level of being like, if you say this, then you must say this. And that's why I tried to do with your analogy, but then you said... Yeah, reasons, it's not, it wasn't reasons, a good analogy. Reasons, it like, wasn't a good analogy. Um, can, can I ask you about... Like, because you know, I, I brought up the Gospels and saying like, perhaps there are some Gospels that talk about how that he wasn't crucified. Yeah. And you rightly said, well, it was for other reasons. It might not be in line with the Muslim argument. Yeah. And I'll be like, that's fine. It's not yeah. that claim. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just yeah. saying like, there is, there is a complete consensus. There's a diversity of opinion. There's co contradicting things. Yeah. And I'm not saying that, therefore, Bible's a true chaos. No. I'm saying, you obviously know more than me. During the time of Moses, he obviously had followers, right? The believers. God, yeah. 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 But then skip to Jesus. Yep. And we've got people who are not doing things right. Therefore, God required another prophet, right? Sorry? So from the time of Moses, yep. there was believers. Yeah. They understood him, they followed him. Yep. Skip to Jesus. Yep. Things are going bad. God sent another uh, messenger to put them on the right path, yes? Yes. Right, okay. Why can't that be superimposed again? Right, okay. And, and, and just, for, this is, this is yes. my harken back to the Gospels when I say like, you're saying that he allowed these people to believe that. To, so I'm saying that maybe there was followers of Jesus, but just like the followers of Moses, they either may have not been outlasted, they may have been killed, their word may have been corrupted over time. Can I and then same thing happened again. Six hundred. Can I reply to that? Like, okay, so on. let me reply to that. Yeah. JC, we're going to move this way. Let, let's just stand this side. Let's just stand over here. Cause, no, yeah, those, those, those guys are getting excitable. So let, let, let me just come, I want to come back to your argument. So what we've, what we've got, and, and, and let, let me pad out my answer for you. Because in the Quran, if you read it carefully, Allah says to the followers of Jesus in the Quran, 
He says, and I will cause those that follow you, Jesus, to be successful over their enemies until the day of until the day of judgment. That's what my, uh, uh, Allah says. But historically, that is obviously not what panned out. And your own argument, your own defense of my accusation that Allah is a, a deceiver, evidences that because your defense is that they were true followers of Jesus, but they got overtaken by false followers of Jesus. False, who believe, false right. But the thing is, if that argument stands, and historically it would have to, because historically my Christianity is the one that won. That's an indisputable point of history. But that means that Allah gave a false promise, a false promise to the followers of Jesus, because he said, I will cause you to be victorious over your enemies until the day of his resurrection. So wait, wait, let me finish. So that means, that means that we now have two, um, two uh, we have what I would call a deception, and now a, a promise that Allah couldn't fulfill in the Quran. I'd like you to address that, please. The false promise. Kind of come back to when I first saw you speak. Yeah. When you were saying that Muslims aren't Christians, so I could just say, well, that promise is fulfilled because Muslims consider themselves followers of Christ. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. No. No. To be clear. No. Uh, to be clear. I, I'll, I'll be more precise. From the time of Jesus to the time of Muhammad. Now let's just assume that once Muhammad arrives, any Muslim follower of Jesus would just become Muslim. Let's just assume that. So we're obviously not talking about from Muhammad onwards. We're talking about before Muhammad. Allah in the Quran promises the Muslim followers of Jesus that he will cause them to be victorious until the day of resurrection. So that means from the time of Jesus to the time of Muhammad, those Muslim followers of Jesus should have been victorious over their enemies. In the day of resurrection? No, no, but obviously when Muhammad comes, they all become Muslim. So what, we're, so what I'm asking, so what I'm asking, no, you've not even heard the question. So what I'm asking is, where is the evidence of the victory of the Muslim followers of Jesus in the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth centuries? You gave a massive time frame. You said to the day of resurrection. Yes, and I'm only asking. And I'm only asking for five. Yeah, yeah. I'm only asking for five centuries. Exactly, but it's, it's obviously after five centuries because we're well past fifth century by now. So I'm you, asking about wanna, the first you, five centuries. If you want to put a time limit on it, it's fine. I don't, I don't care. No, listen no, carefully. No, You've no, obviously no. not understood the argument. Listen carefully, yeah, Mohammed, to the argument. Yeah, okay. Allah makes a promise. Like, let's imagine you're a first century follower of Isa. Right? That right now, me and you are first centuries people, right? And you're a follower of Isa, and I'm an enemy of Isa. Allah promises to you in the Quran that you're going to be victorious over me until the day of resurrection. Now, I'm not interested in every single century. I'm only asking about the first five centuries. Where is the evidence of your victory over me in those first five centuries? <sighs> you weren't listening. Let's imagine oh, that, that we enemy. are both first century followers. Oh, sorry, right. So now answer the question. Yeah. My answer is it doesn't matter. Uh, no, it does. No, no, you think it does. It's my answer. Go on, it's go on, answer. go on. Right. I'm saying, you're saying, but here's five centuries between now and, and, and Islam. Okay, because you put that qualifier, like at that point they would have just gone Muslim, and then you would just say it's fine because Islam is. Uh, Everyone's a Muslim, that's the idea of the Muslim uh, faith. We just say that everyone's born a Muslim, everyone was Muslim, Adam was Muslim. We don't believe any of that, but go on. I'm saying Muslims do. Yeah. yeah. Right? But you're saying, all right, give me these in the five centuries. Like that's like somehow some sort of like etched in stone condition. Like you, you, that's another arbitrary point. You just made that point because you think it's important for something to happen within those uh, time frames. But I'm saying it doesn't matter. We've got to the day of resurrection. Can I reply? I mean? Yeah, go on. The point is, yeah. Allah has made a promise. And the promise is very clear. You obviously, I no, I honestly, on these matters, I seem to know the Quran better than you. The Quran is very clear that the followers of Isa at the time of Isa are going to be victorious over their enemies, and that promise is given until the day of resurrection. Now, obviously, when Muhammad arrives, we just assume that if such a thing really happened, all the the Muslims would be followers of Muhammad. But the truth is, when we look at history. 
when we look at history, the Christianity that won was my kind of Christianity. We beat all the other claims of groups that said that they wanted to follow Jesus. The Donatists, the Ebionites, the Gnostics, uh, you know, the Valentinians. We beat them all. And the truth is that if Allah makes a promise that these Muslims are going to be victorious over non-Muslims, and actually it turns out that the Pauline Christians are the ones that win, then that means Allah fails in his promise. But you're just saying that he fails now. I'm saying he failed from the first, from the first, from the time that he gave the promise. He failed. From the time he gave the promise. Yes. Until when? But the promise. Yeah, but when is your time frame? I've given my time frame. Yeah, from? from the first century until the time of Muhammad, before just the day before Muhammad was born. That's my time frame. That's in the Quran. It says that. It literally. Would you like me to show you? No, no. I'm, I'm asking. It literally asking. says. It, it literally says from the time of Jesus to day before. I'm, I'm going to quote it to you. It's going to be a bit of a paraphrase. It's not going to be an exact quote, but I've got the Quran in my bag. If you want to see it, Muhammad says to Jesus at the time that Jesus was alive on earth. He says, and I will cause your followers to be triumphant over their enemies until the day of resurrection. So he's saying that in the first century to a first century man, about first century followers of that first century man. And then if we take that promise seriously, what we should see panning out in history is you have all these different people competing, but the Muslims are the ones that win. But that isn't what we see. What we see is that Trinitarian, incarnational Christians who believe Jesus Christ was God, was crucified and rose on the third day, kick ass, conquer the Roman Empire, destroy a pagan empire, the Persian Empire, and then Muhammad arrives on the scene. So what we're seeing is history not panning out the way that the Quran said it should. That's proof that the Quran is not true. Because you, you, you're saying that that's a false uh, so prediction. Sorry. Allah failed in his promise. It says in the Quran, and Allah fails not in his promises. That's a quote ad verbatim from the Quran. Allah fails not in his promises. So if he gives a promise to the Muslim followers of Jesus, and then that fails to come true, then Allah has failed in his promises. So now we have a deception, we have a contradiction, and we have a failure in promise. So you've now got three solid reasons demonstrating the falsity of the Quran. According to you, I don't consider a deception at all. Uh, your false promise, I, the interpretation you're making, uh, I respect that, it's quite literal. That you're thinking like, I've read this, this is what the word says, this is what it is. But I'm sure other Muslims would take that as interpretation as applying to Muslims as well. I'm talking not not the Christian Muslims that we're talking about. We're talking about the post-Muhammad Muslims. Yeah. Everyone, so there's no confusion. <coughs> so that would be like it's a spread to that. So therefore, we've got so now to the end of. Yeah, days. I mean, I'm interested in the post-Jesus Muslims. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah, I, I understand. But I'm saying like some people might attribute that to the idea of that it isn't just about the post-Jesus Muslims that are, are calling. Them. It's about all the followers of, of Allah, which is that comes after Muhammad as well. Yeah, but yeah. But, but, the, but the point is the only bit I'm interested in <coughs> is the bit based on the promise, and the promise is that Allah is going to cause these post Jesus followers to be successful over all of their opponents. And historically, you and I both know <coughs> that it was. Oh, sorry, I'm. <coughs> Hey fever. <coughs> Have you got something to drink? Water, anything. Right. So a post what we've got is the fact that post Jesus, Catholic Christianity dominates everything. It beats all of its opponents within the Jewish religion. It beats the Roman world. Then through the Roman world it beats the Persians as well as barbarian pagans from the north. It even manages to stave off the rise of Islam. You know, Muslims didn't manage to conquer Christian Europe. They didn't manage to conquer Christian Ethiopia. So the point is, and now we are the biggest religion on earth. So the point is, historically, Christianity, not Islam, has been superior over all of its enemies. 
our armies, at least the armies of Western nations, invade Islamic countries at will. You can't stop us. Now, that's not a triumphalist claim, by the way. No, no, what? Hold on one second. That's exactly what Muslims do in the corner. They say... Well, you don't deflect, you're talking yeah. to me, man. Right. That's a really low now, my, my point is... Oh, my you've got other Muslims, that you're talking right. to me. Right, that's fine, I'm talking to you, Mohammed, but listen to what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that if the promise to Jesus was true, history should have panned out differently. Well, we still got... By the way, I'm not, I'm not celebrating, applauding or lauding the idea of the Western armies invading Muslim countries. I never took it that way. Okay, good. I just want to be clear about that. It's just because you went, well, other Muslims say that. I was yeah. like, dude, there's no That's fair enough. That's fair enough. So my point is, if, if the Islamic claim was true, history should have panned out a different way than it did. I understand your point. Anyway, man, I need to head All right. off, man. Mohammed, that was a nice conversation. conversation. I know it got a bit heated. Oh, sorry, what's your name again, Tom? Bob. Bob. Do you have Do you have a Bible? Uh, yeah, actually, we've got my my roommate is uh, no, Adventist. Do you personally have a Bible? Brilliant. What I would encourage you to do, bro, is have a read of it and then come and speak to a knowledgeable Christian about it. Can I give you a little gift, just as a sign of appreciation for the time that you've taken to talk to me? What's your channel? Our, our channel Our channel is called Soko Films. Have you got like uh, I'll write it down. Is it on there? There you go. Um, is there a channel on there? No, no, but I can I can give you our channel. Yeah, certainly. but it's not so much less. Soko Films. There you go. All right, bro. Could you get us a bottle of water before you go? Yeah, where is it? Just, there's a cafe just there. Oh, yeah, I'll be back in a second. Yeah. Do you want a water, bro? All right. No, I'm good, man. All right, it's lovely to speak yeah. to you. All the best. Man. Get in touch. God bless, Mohammed. Can these guys all uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll get them. Yeah, go on. I'm listening to you. I'm a Muslim, but I was listening to you. Whatever you're saying, yeah. it looks interesting. Um, yeah. There are certain things which I like you to say. Number one is that we believe that uh, Jesus Christ is a prophet. Yes, we do. I was a young boy, and I was taught in a... Uh, in a Catholic school as a young boy. Yeah. I used to go to the church till the age of uh, 10. Yeah. So.